What is vegetarianism? Some consider it to be a good, healthy diet. To some, it is ethical, and to others, it is the purest way to attain spiritual enlightenment. A vegetarian eating plan, also known as plant-based eating, is based on a diet of grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. This style of eating has existed since the beginning of recorded history. A vegetarian movement was founded in Rome as early as 600 BCE. From the Christian Bible to the Upanishads, from the ancient writings of Plato to the beliefs of the early Egyptians, a vegetarian diet was expounded as a diet of choice for a peaceful and healthful existence, both physically and spiritually. Ancient masters and sages and the world's greatest and most influential scientists, artists, actors, and super athletes all advocate a plant-based diet. Vegetarianism is a compassionate, ecologically sound, and spiritually uplifting lifestyle that respects the sanctity of all life. Welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. On today's episode, our Supreme Master Television Correspondents had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Richard Foltz, vegetarian author of Animals in Islamic Tradition and Muslim Cultures. Dr. Fultz is also Associate Professor of the Department of Religion in the University of Concordia in Montreal, Canada. As an authority on Islamic studies, Dr. Fultz shared with us his insights on animal rights and vegetarianism in one of the world's great religions, Islam. Let us join the interview between our Supreme Master Television Correspondents and Dr. Fultz in Montreal, Canada. Supreme Master Television. My name is Candy from Montreal, Canada. It is a great pleasure to have Dr. Richard Foles today with us and share his opinion on Islamic tradition and Muslim cultures. Dr. Foles is presently an associate professor in the Department of Religion in Concordia University in Montreal. He graduated from Harvard University in 1996 in history and Middle Eastern studies. He has taught at over eight universities worldwide and has traveled in 60 countries on five continents, including Kuwait, Iran, and Uzbekistan. He speaks over seven languages, including Persian, French, Italian, and Spanish. He has contributed extensively in writing research articles and reviews on Islamic tradition and religion, animal protection, vegetarianism, and ecology aspects in Muslims' points of view. In 2006, he received a South-South Translation grant for his book, Spirituality in the Land of the Noble. Professor Foltz is also a professional uh, musician, a freelance journalist for various newspapers, in America, Europe, and as well as Middle East. So very nice to meet you here, Professor Fold. Welcome. And can you tell us about the courses that you give in the University of Concordia? Well, most of the courses I teach have to do with Islam, Islamic studies, Muslim civilizations, but uh, I also do some more specialized courses, for example, on Iran, Iranian culture, uh, some courses on environmental ethics and animal rights. What have interested you like in learning all these cultures, religions and uh, Middle Eastern studies? I guess I was just born curious, you know, wanted to learn about the world that I live in. One thing leads to another. You know? I understand, uh, and I know that you are a vegetarian now, and how long have you been vegetarian, and why have you changed to go to this diet? Well, I first became a vegetarian uh, more than 30 years ago as a teenager, and uh, it's hard to remember at that time exactly why. I, I think that uh, feeling uh, about animals and, and animal rights had something to do with it, and as I read, uh, books about the vegetarian diet, I realized their health considerations as well. Um, but about uh, 10 years ago or so, I started to incorporate this into my academic research. And as I started to read more books uh, about animal rights and vegetarianism, 
I got a lot more information about yeah. the various reasons for um, excluding meat uh, from my diet. And uh, so these include, I, I think, the obvious ones for, for, for most vegetarians, uh, animal rights being one, uh, an objection to uh, factory farming, industrial uh, meat production, uh, environmental issues, uh, yes. and also health issues. Of uh, not wanting this kind of, you know, industrial uh, kinds of ingredients going into, into my uh, metabolism. What is the Islamic test saying about the Quran and uh, Prophet Muhammad's compassion teaching? But I think the majority of Muslims uh, today do see their religion as being one based on compassion. And uh, this is something that you very often hear in conversations with Muslims, is that they want to talk about it as a religion of peace and compassion. And the texts certainly carry that message. Uh, one of the distinctive things about the Islamic texts, particularly the, the Quran and the Hadiths, which are reports about the sayings and, and deeds of the Prophet Muhammad, are that God himself is compassionate. The British Medical Journal reports that the more smart you are, the more likely you'd be vegetarian. In a research that followed 8,000 people from birth, scientists discovered that those with an IQ five points above the average had become vegetarian by the time they were 30 years old. Trish Kennett, chief executive of the International High IQ Society, Mensa, explains, Smart people consider all aspects of their life very, very carefully. People who think about the ethics of killing animals will naturally choose vegetarianism more often. Be a vegetarian, because it's smart. tradition. Among the most uh, common names for God are uh, Ar Rahman and uh, Ar Rahim, which uh, can be, be translated as the compassionate and the merciful. Uh, in fact, Muslims uh, invoke these names before beginning anything that's important. If they're about to start a project or to begin to talk or, or eat or pray or anything, they'll say in the name of God, the, 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 the compassionate, the merciful. So, so this idea of God as being a source of compassion, the primary source of compassion, is very, very central in the Islamic tradition. And it's also the case, although this is maybe not as clearly understood by all Muslims, but when the texts talk about compassion, they're not just talking about human beings, they talk about all of God's creation. And is Islam different than other religions of its attitude towards animals? As in Islam, it's quite clear the belief that animals have souls. And if you take that seriously and ask what are the implications of that, to how am I going to treat this member of another species, if you consider, well, it doesn't have a soul, or it does have a soul, presumably that could really uh, affect uh, how you treat that other species or how you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of creation as a whole, Islam teaches that creation, meaning the world and everything in it, belongs to God, not to human beings. So we're really just caretakers here. We're you know, supposed to be responsible stewards. And mm -hmm. uh, I think most people that look around uh, the world today uh, would quickly draw the conclusion that we're not carrying out this responsibility very, very well, that uh, creation is in pretty bad shape, um, and that uh, you know, we bear some uh, responsibility for that. That's maybe more the case, again, if you want to compare with Christianity, or even Buddhism, which um, you know, considers that uh, what appears to be creation is really just an appearance. 
Um, so Islam, I think, has a different message from either Christianity or Buddhism in the sense that this world, this creation, is very important. It doesn't mean that the next world is not important, but they're both important. And that the way Muslims behave in this world and the way they treat the creation that they're inhabiting is going to directly affect the experience that they have uh, in the next world. And I would say that this, this message is maybe more prevalent in Islam than in some other traditions. I know that you are also quite concerned about the environment uh, and made significant uh, contributions in this field of religion and, uh, and ecology. So do you want to tell us about that? What is exactly this field of study? Well, I think science today is making it quite clear that uh, uh, human activities have had very serious negative impact on global ecosystems, and these systems are our life support systems. Uh, the integrity of ecosystems is what enables us to survive as a species, regardless of you know, all the other species that, that we share the Earth with. And uh, the more that scientific research shows us how we're damaging these ecosystems, uh, we have to really ask the question, are human activities putting the survival of not just our species, but many species uh, in jeopardy uh, for the future? And this is a really uh, serious question that I think it, it would be irresponsible to avoid. And a question that comes after that then uh, is, well, how did it come to this? You know. How has human thinking developed such that we would allow ourselves to do the kinds of things that are destroying our own life support systems? It, it, it yeah. seems irrational, and we like to consider ourselves a rational species. So, so we have to ask this question, why, what choices have we made as individuals and as societies that have led us to do these things which are harming ourselves and others as well? Now, when we frame this question, we have to realize that humans make choices based on what their culture tells them to value. Mm -hmm. And cultures are different. Cultures, in other words, value some things differently. One culture might value the family more than the individual. Another culture might value the individual more than the family. Um, so there are differences in values that will lead to different choices. You know, if you're from a family-oriented culture, you might say, well, I'm going to choose a career that will enable me to give money to my parents, you know. Whereas if you're in an individual-oriented culture, you might choose a career which is going to you know, maximize your own, you know, uh, future benefits. So these are real differences in values which lead to differences in choices that you make. So when you ask the question, why have we made the choices that we've made which have led us to damage the environment that we live in, then the next question is, well, what values have our cultures taught us so that we make this choice, so that we think it's better to have quick profits for corporations in the next quarter than it is to preserve you know, a water supply or air quality for future generations. We're, we're making these choices and our culture is reinforcing these choices. So as academics, when we want to understand these processes, we have to look at where cultures get their value systems. And one thing that all human societies have in common is a history of religious belief. It could be different religions, but all societies have this religious background which provides a source of ethics and morals and choices and values. And so in order to understand why we're making the choices we're making and why we value what we value, I think we have to look at different societies' religious ethics and what they, what they allow. So as again, as academics, we're interested in studying these kinds of things. And I think to get back to, to answering your question more directly and the question of oh, what is the relationship between religion and ecology, yes. Okay, well, ecology is about understanding the ecosystems and how we participate in these ecosystems. Part of understanding our relationship to our ecosystems is understanding the religious aspect of our cultures that make us choose to act in this way or that regarding the environment. And I think a lot of people are coming to feel that it's a kind of consumer-oriented, pro-corporate interpretation of religions 
whether it be Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism or Islam or Hinduism, you know, Confucianism, all of these religions are being interpreted today by many people in ways that are very consumer-oriented and, and, and capitalism-oriented. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paul. Thank you for your kind-hearted presence today on Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living.